Hello everyone and welcome back to This Day in History, our nightly look back at a specific day in history where we take a look back at the events of a day, the historical context at which those events happened, the historical ramifications of those events, and we also take a look at some people that were born on that day and some people that died on that day. As always, please hit the subscribe button if you have not yet the bell notification icon to be alerted anytime I post new content, and tell a friend. It really helps us out. And now, without any further ado, this day in history, February 24th. And on this day in 1988, in a 8-0 ruling, the Supreme Court upheld, overturned a lower court ruling and upheld the right to satirize public figures. The case involved Larry E. Flint, the publisher of Hustler Magazine, who was being sued by the Reverend Jerry Falwell, who was the pastor and founder of Thomas Rhodes Baptist Church and Liberty University, then called Liberty Christian Academy. Oh, I'm sorry. That's the high school. Liberty University is the college, sorry. And he co -found, as I said, co-founded the whole majority. He was a huge, influential figure on the religious and conservative right. And five years earlier, Flint had ran a piece in Hustler where he satirized in a negative light Jerry Falwell's first sexual experience. Falwell sued for damages and um, well he won two hundred thousand dollar judgment against flint flint sued and i'm sorry appealed flint appealed all the way up to the supreme court and won and um this is you know a huge win for freedom of speech uh, it's one of those cases that you say wow what would have happened if it went the other way? Would you be able to satirize public figures? Or would another case have wound its way through the court system? Um, so, uh, Flint um, versus Falwell. Uh, and uh, I have uh, heard descriptions before of the piece that ran um, in Hustler Magazine, and, um, yeah, it's unflattering to say the least. Some births that occurred on this day. In 1942, in Stamford, Connecticut, Joe Lieberman was born. Uh, Joe Lieberman, of course, was a United States Senator uh, from Connecticut for many years. Um, he was Al Gore's running mate in the 2000 presidential election. And he was a possible running mate of John McCain in 2008, just eight years later, as a rep on the Republican ticket. Um, you know, if 537 votes had went the other way in Florida, Joe Lieberman would have been vice president for Al Gore. And if Al Gore had served two terms, he would have been president from 2001 to 2009. It would have been Al Gore and Joe Lieberman leaving the Capitol on January 20, 2009, when the new president was taken over. Of course, it was Barack Obama because John McCain lost that election. But um, just kind of stunning to think about that. Uh, he uh, was a very outspoken supporter of the war in Iraq, um, and that cost him uh, somewhat. In uh, 2006, he ran for re-election to the Senate um, and faced a very competitive primary uh, from a... Uh, anti-war candidate by the name of Ned Lamont, who is now the current governor of Connecticut. And uh, Lamont was supported 
by a very quick growing uh, sensation online support and his online support was coming f being driven uh, by liberal activists uh, a liberal blog called the daily coast um, and a uh, emerging left-wing radio network by the name of air america uh, some of the people that were on air america uh, were al franken um, randy rhodes uh, Mike Malloy, uh, and a uh, lady you may have heard of named Rachel Maddow. Um, you know, they were in support of Lamont. Uh, and Lamont won. Like, he beat Joe Lieberman. He got the most votes, even though Joe Lieberman had Bill Clinton come in and campaign for him, even though he had... Uh, All of the Democratic stars at that time uh, parachuted in and, and campaigned for him. Chris Dodd, the, his fellow Democratic senator, they all made a real hard pitch for him. Lieberman believed that this was a fluke, that if the full voters of Connecticut had their say, that he would win. And Connecticut does not have a sore loser law. And um, he ran as a independent Democrat um, in the general election and won. Um, he would serve in the Senate until 2012, uh, at which point he would retire. Um, interestingly enough, on the McCain side, you know, him and McCain were different parties, but they often sought common grounds uh, together, uh, along with uh, the artist formerly known as Lindsey Graham, um, and uh, would work together, especially on defense matters. Uh, but one issue that where McCain and uh, Lieberman had a disagreement, and I did not realize this to do in some research tonight, some quite fast screaming, uh, was on the repeal of Don't Ask, Don't Tell. Uh, Lieberman was a champion of repealing this in the Senate, and uh, McCain led a filibuster. I do not mean to speak ill of the dead. I, I think a lot of John McCain, uh, but he filibustered that bill, and he voted against closure, and he voted against the repeal. Um, and, uh, you know, Lieberman and him had very strong disagreements on that. Uh, but they were still able to work together to get things done. Uh, Lieberman was the chairman of the Homeland Security Committee. Um, he is largely responsible uh, for getting that department um, off the ground and enacted. And his uh, vice chairwoman was Susan Collins. And him and Susan Collins ran a great committee together. Um, so uh, a very hawkish, uh, a Democrat, a devout follower of the Jewish faith, and just an all-around interesting political figure. Joe Lieberman. Um, you know, one of those people you'd be like, you'd look at and say, that's just an interesting art to go from Al Gore's running mate to almost being John McCain's running mate. I've heard Steve Schmidt talk about this before. The only thing that really prevented uh, John, Joe Lieberman from becoming the running mate was the fact that the news broke uh, but it was being considered according to Schmidt they had to keep it a secret until the very end once McCain got the nomination officially and then he was going to be like my running mate's Joe Lieberman 
and that is I mean and it was gonna be a one term uh deal suppose is from the way Schmidt described it uh during uh coverage of McCain's funeral. A one term deal to fix America's problems. Some deaths that occurred on this day in nineteen fifty three in Washington, D.C., former Senator Robert M. La Follette, Jr. killed himself at the age of 58. Uh, La Follette had served in the Senate from 1925 until not his defeat uh, in the 1948 uh, election. I'm so, wait a minute. Uh, does it sound right? Uh, I think. Sorry, I'm. Until 1947, he had lost uh, in the Republican primary in 1946 uh, to a man by the name of Joseph McCarthy. Or Joseph McCarthy. Um, there's been a lot of speculation as to why uh, La Follette killed himself. Uh, part of it is the belief uh, that he uh, knew that some evidence was going to come out. Uh, that a subcommittee that um, he was a member of um, and some of the staff that worked on it um, were communists um, and they had Soviet links and they he some speculate that he feared that Joseph McCarthy was going to red bait him. Um, others suggest he just succumbed to years of depression and years of uh, anxiety. Uh, so, who it, it, it's you may never know, um, but uh, yeah, um, he's one of the few. American uh, senators uh, who committed suicide. Um, and there's only been a few to commit suicide while in office. Uh, so, uh, yes, uh, Robert M. La Follette, and he, of course, is the son of of Robert M. La Follette Sr., his uh, father, who is a very influential uh, figure in populist American politics. I will see you all tomorrow.